Hello, welcome to this drafting guide for the famous 1953 Charles James Clover dress. And the whole dress is so stunning. Quite often you can forget that the bodice itself is actually really interesting as well. So I'm going to look at that today. But if you're my patron, I'm going to look at more parts of the dress and talk about construction and drafting over the coming week. If you haven't watched my channel before, my name is Charlotta. This is the School of Pattern Cutting and I love pattern cutting and all sorts of vintage inspiration. So you'll find both on my channel. So today I'm going to look at the Charles James 1953 clover dress. It's one of the most iconic black and white designs. It is of course haute couture. It's made for the person. Charles James was renowned for draping everything. Um, so I'm not a costume historian or a fashion historian. I'm a pattern cutter and fashion designer. So I'm probably not the most expertise on this subject, but I just love getting inspired by geniuses like Charles James and reinterpret how I would make it into a um, more ready to wear garment and what drafting techniques you can use and what bits you can pick out. Because of course the great thing is whenever you look at fashion history, you might not want to copy the whole style. You might make that bodice, but put it on a really simple um, cocktail dress, something like that, or a normal strapped dress. Um, so it's going to be more about um, how you construct it a little bit, but also how you would draft it and drape it and how the style lines actually work. Um, so I'm going to start from the inside out with how you your base layer, then we're going to look at actually how you would design the draft. I hope you enjoy it. Let's draw out this famous Charles James Clover dress from 1953. So it is pure haute couture. Um, and I was talking to another pattern cutting teacher on you earlier about how um, Charles James is not the easiest to analyze um, because he worked. Um, completely um by draping so with some designers it might look complicated but the pattern cutting method is actually really straightforward this charles james it's um because he worked on the bodice completely it's actually quite complicated um because he completely followed the bodice so rather than in pattern cutting we cut and slash we create pleats um all that sort of stuff he because he worked on a bodice he could ignore it um so if you have a look at um this book which is a genius of charles james and uh, it's from the brooklyn museum you can see something like this has lots of layers so this is really much constructed like a classic um ball gown or um it's got boning it's got lots of layers it's got um it's got a fatter slip, nylon mesh, non-woven fabric, boning, a petticoat, um, fay, cream to taffet, fatter, and an under petticoat, and then a black velvet top flounce. And the whole thing is made out of um, twenty out of thirty pieces, and twenty one of them, twenty eight of them, are cut as mirrors. So the whole skirt, left and right, are complete mirrors. Um, and then just the bodice is completely different. And I'm going to concentrate on the bodice today, just because um, the whole dress is quite complicated. So I'm going to do that in more detail um, on my Patreon, where I have more um, bit more opportunity to look at it in more depth and... Um, to the landscape and on a bigger scale. So today we're gonna just analyze the bodice itself. And oh, hello Jillian, how are you? So hello everybody who's joining me, wonderful. So let's have a look. Um, so the whole dress is that full on um, ball gown. It's probably really heavy. Um, you can see it's actually got a sip. I quite like that um, it's so sort of constructed quite modernly so it's sort of using boning and stuff but it's not staying committed to it 
and you can see it's got a curved base bend and then you can sort of see some of the boning underneath and you can see here as well as layers because just because the fabric has so much volume you would construct the different under layers in at different levels so you got your seam on the top layer on the waist and then the under layers would be stitched to it slightly lower down so you don't get a really bulky waist and but you can sort of see it here can you see that shadow is where the next la layer comes and that's when they're all the under stiffenings are joined and i think the whole skirt is sort of um boned like a crinoline a bit so it all stands up so let's have a look at this so this is where you would use your moulage block um, and you would do your under construction like a corset um, and what's really fascinating about this bodice so the whole dress is made out of 30 pieces as i said and only two of them form the front bodice so it's two pieces and they're the only asymmetric um, pieces of the dress the rest you can see it's all symmetric and it's all mirrored on the center front and the center back so um if, we, if i zoom out you can see it's got side seams here and then it's the back is quite um straightforward so the back just has the panels and then the whole skirt is symmetric so the bodice is really the contrast because it sort of looks like a bow nearly if you look at this sort of um here you can sort of see it because it's pleated on one side and not the other it sort of looks like it's draped or twisted around um and the rest is quite symmetric so let's have a look at the bodice and do feel free to ask any questions throughout so it's really fascinating so you would start with your normal um corset construction so underneath um you have your normal sort of um bones however many bones you wanted you have your corset bones um and then you have your undergarments like your the rest of your lining at the top um so that holds it all um up and Trisha from Creative Costume Designer has done a really fantastic masterclass on my Patreon all about um, corset construction, all the different ways you can use and how to construct it. But that would be underneath, so it'd be quite a straightforward corset. And you can see the two cups are symmetric, so that's straightforward. So it's quite a conventional method, but then it gets much more exciting on top so you actually got one really big t piece so i'm going to show you one of the pattern pieces which gets straight around is like this 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 so that's all one pattern piece and the second one is actually only around the right bust area um so you can actually do this with flat pattern cutting so if you have a um It sort of depends what um, block you have. If you have a um, a moulage or a super fitted block, you can use that as your starting point. I'm gonna say this, I'm not a historical designer, I'm not a costume designer, I'm not a fashion designer, uh, a fashion historian. I am a fashion designer. And um, so I'm not looking at it from a fashion historian's point. I'm looking at a fashion designers and pattern cutting points so it's sort of interpreting a historical haute couture ball gown and seeing how I would use it if I made it as a ready to wear or made to measure garment for yourself so um I, I would use some corset construction I would probably use for inside I would do out of power net um so it's lighter or out of a cotton twill um so I wouldn't I know some of you do amazing haute couture stuff this is not me. I'm looking at how um, how it's constructed, but also how I would then recreate it, which isn't always the same. So I would start with either my I would start with my super fitted block, 
Um, or if you have a moulage block, you would use that and they sort of look like this. They basically have lots of shaping so you can completely shape it to yourself. Um, and I'm, I look slightly blurry. I hope I'm looking all right to you at home. Um, so basically either something like that, you either, if you buy a sewing pattern, which is quite a straightforward, very fit address, you can start with that and then add the corset construction. Or if you have your own block, you would start with your super fitted block. And then you would do your bottom construction, just create a straightforward corset. So you'd create the extra cutting lines um, for fitting and you would sort of create your bust shaping on the undergarment. And thanks for Kelly. I'm glad I'm, it's not grainy at your end. Um, and when you, once you drafted that, so quite straightforward cutting lines, fitting lines, converting um, your darts into different volume, I will actually make my first trial of just the undergarment to check that it fits. And once you're happy with that, you can use your normal draft pattern cutting. So you, um, you because you have all these cutting lines, you can then draw on your very avant-garde asymmetric drape design and use that. So you would um, move, you would rotate your dart, you would some of your darts to create um, these pleats and you would use some of your darts and shaping to create the seams. So you can use that way or the other way is that you actually um, drape it, which is of course easier if you're working on a mannequin rather than on yourself. And if you did that, I would again construct my basic um, corset or supportive undergarment and then I would actually get a similar type of weight of fabric this is silk um this is a I think it's a let me just check I've got the book it is either a satin yes it's a satin so um I would use something similar a similar weight as a really nice thick cotton satin um, to just drape it on it um, because if you're working on another mannequin which isn't yourself you can really drape it on and you could even on your undergarment tape on the lines how you want it to fit there and then you use them to drape it out um, and I'm probably going to talk about that a bit more on Patreon and um, I can show you on the mannequin but for now, what it basically is, it's your normal sort of um, heart um, neckline. It's called, it's called heart neckline. And then instead of our normal cup shapes, what you end up doing, you basically, you got your seam, which goes underneath the bust. And then it has got two pleats there. So these two pleats are basically the shaping from around here. So how, however many shaping lines you have, you convert these into the two pleats there. And then into this seam, you can use that to basically dissect these lines and instead have um, a single piece. And with stuff like that, doing it draped is um, slightly, well, it's sort of both, it's a labor of love for whether you drape it or whether you um, flat pattern cutting. Um, you just have to be precise and not rush it. Um, and once you've done that, so you've done your sort of sh shaping, you converted your seams, which are vertical, into a sort of shaped horizontal line. Um, so where you put that seam posi um, position is going to be really important because if you put it too high up, you won't actually be able to convert um, your shaping. So it's sort of, that's why sometimes it's easier to do it on the mannequin because then you don't have to follow um, the pattern exactly. You can sort of play around with it. Um, but if you do a flat pattern cutting, you can very clearly see where you can um, shape it. And Natalie just said, I love that pleat shaping. I love it too. I think it's sort of, if you had another dart there, it would look quite flat. So that pleat, the double pleat, brings in a bit of soft um, volume. And I love it on the, which one are you looking at? On here, can you see how it, it's not a very good image. 
it looks like it's sort of really 3D. So the, basically the top pleating here sort of reflects the dart there. So the shape is really interesting. Um, so he has really thought about it. Um, yeah, and you can see here on the side view as well how it sort of, he goes up and then like that. So you got there, you have that really pointy um, effect. And then the same pointy one is then done on the top. So it's sort of reflected and followed through. It's quite elegant. Um, oh yeah, here, look, you can sort of see it. It's sort of, the more you look at Charles James, the more you realize this is sort of parallel to there. So you got these sort of diagonals which are reflected, but one is underneath the bust and one is on the bust. So it's asymmetric, but quite often when you get asymmetric bust lines, they look like one side is droopy. Like quite often when you get these twisted stars and when you've got one neckline, you have to be really careful that it doesn't look like you're droopy. This sort of actually, it looks really balanced. Um, but it's asymmetric, so it's very clever. Um, so that's your one, one panel, which will look something like... It will look something like this, this one. And the straight of grain, I think it's, it's a completely straight of grain. Quite straightforward for Charles James. And then the other piece is trickier, because you're putting all these shaping... So we've basically already gotten rid of something like this shaping here. But all this shaping is going to go in one piece. So it comes from, I'm going to look at the side view again because I want to see where the seam comes from. Um, well, that's, you can really see here fantastically. Can you see it comes slightly up? So um, I'm going to do our side view. If that's our side view, and that's our side seam. It doesn't come from the waist, which would make it really bulky again. It's sort of slightly higher up the side seam. And then it sort of curves round and then it goes back to the bust point. Let me double check. Yeah, it actually, can you see? It's, and I, I haven't drawn mine curved enough. Can you see? It really curves right underneath where your bust is. And then it's, this is sort of your bust here. So it curves and then if you bust, so this would be where your bra wire is for example. You can sort of see it here a bit. And then it goes, it would be 90 degree angles I would imagine. It then goes back up to the boost. So it actually goes past our bust point and then goes back. And I think that is, so it can, if you would do it right from the center of the um, bust, you wouldn't be able to move at last shaping seam into it so because what basically then happens is that this shaping seam and that shaping seam gets moved into there and then all the shaping from here gets moved into that one um, seam there so again the pattern actually probably looks something like so that's our top of this size, and then it's sort of got that curved size, and then it's probably something like this. So you actually all this converted sh shaping is put into that one bust point. And Natalie's saying that's a brilliant way to shape a bust. I agree, Natalie. I think it's very clever because if you just had it. Um, So um, this is actually the best one. If you just had it sort of going up here, you wouldn't be able to do the shaping. So just by extending a little bit into that curve, you can actually, anything from this side gets put into there. So this point would have to be exactly there on your curved corset, the last shaping vertical seam is. So um, what you might have to do is, that's why it's easier to drape. Um, but even when you're constructing your undergarment, you could already sort of sketch out where these points need to be. Because ideally what you would do is that on your undergarment, one of your seam lines would be around here. It doesn't have to be exactly, it can be slightly to the left and the right. Um, but it has to be in this area roughly. So it can be converted into um, 
into that seam. So if it was over here, it'd be trickier, for example. And also it's sort of, I would do an under corset construction, this um, probably either, f you can do four front panels um, or six. Um, four would be probably a little bit easier, but um, a six of course allows you to do much more shaping. Um, but then you could always create more panels underneath so you can do more boning and then um, but it doesn't have to sometimes the, bow, the seams you can sort of when you're draping on top you can sort of merge them together um, so you might have to sort of a mixture of flat pattern cutting and draping I would actually drape the star so I would flat pattern cut my corset underneath and then I would tape my design lines onto that corset and then I would drape my fabric. Um, the other option is that you flat pattern cut the outside as well. Um, again, I would actually for that, even there, I would put on my undergarment, draw on the design lines and then use them to flat pattern cut it. So either cut it apart um, or you um, trace it through where these design lines need to be and then you can flat pattern cut it. And when you put it on your trial, you would have to do a little bit of fitting. Um, but once you've done that, the, the great thing is, so that's the side, that's the front. The wonderful thing is that the back is actually super straightforward. <laughs> it's probably the only straightforward thing about this, this, this dress is that the back is just, I think it's just two pattern pieces. And then it has basically lots of um, boning in side but the actually the um i'm just looking quickly if i've got a more close close-up view but even here you can see the back there isn't a very good back view you can sort of see it um it's, it's sort of a drawing where you think it's actually not that clear so they're trying to be like too over complicated i think the back looks literally Either, I think they've tried to get, if you look at the back view, full body view. It's, depending on what you can get at Vavis, because of course this is quite low. So you might get at Vavis just two panels, or otherwise it'd be four panels. And of course that's actually curved as well. The back is really straightforward. Um, I think it looks like it could be just one panel either side of the center back seam. And then of course you've got your sip there, um, which I think is sort of pop the 1950s construction sip, so it's not an invisible sip. It's a normal sip which has worked invisibly. But that's the straightforward design, that's the straightforward design on the back. And that's sort of a starting point on how the bodice of the famous clover dress was designed. So um, you can see by breaking down a really complicated design like that, you can make a starting point at how you draft it. And then of course you would do the same for the skirt, just do it bit by bit and then join them all together. And just one, just to say again, to finish off, is of course what I'm doing is I'm doing contemporary um, sort of fashion pattern cutting interpretation. So I'm not looking at a historian point of view where it would be all about um, the layers of corsets, all that sort of stuff. Um, and Natalie is just saying, so great to analyze the bodies which can be distracted by the skirt of his dress. You're quite right, um, Natalie, because most of us would look at the skirt and just like be so bamboozled by it that you just think oh yeah it's quite a straight book bodice you know it's just a normal corset body but if you look at it you can just see what how beautifully constructed it is and that of course it's what makes um, Charles James so amazing there's nothing he hasn't considered which is why I think he never made that much money because he never compromised so most other people would have stuck a really boring bodice onto this dress um but he put just as much design consideration into the bodies. Is it an amazing dress? I hope you enjoyed this little drafting guide. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up um, or head over to my Instagram if you want to watch the next drafting guide. 
live or any of my other tips and feel free to uh, message me on Instagram. I love to hear um, your comments and ideas. But that's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Bye.